Well, good day to everyone. It's been 10 months now since I've started a YouTube channel entitled Repivot22, so I'm a bit overdue in showing you a video about repivoting. This is a fourth wheel from a Zenith Pocket Watch that has the extended pivot broken off of it, the pivot that um, the second hand rides on. And um, it's so clearly broken off of it that I cannot measure the diameter that uh, the pivot should be. And that's where this tool comes in. This is a jewel gauge, I think is the name of it. And it is for measuring the inside diameter of a jewel. And you can see here that the inside diameter of this jewel is, the fourth wheel jewel, is about 27 and a half. So 0.275 millimeters. Now the first thing that I need to do is stone off the little bit remainder of the broken pivot and I'll start with oil stone and then finish up with uh, a jasper stone just to leave it with a little bit better finish. You'll notice as we go along here that I alternate between the step chuck, which is what I'm using right here, and uh, a standard 8mm collet. Um, this, is, this is one of the challenge of repivoting in your standard watchmaker's lathe is that the collet type lathe does not guarantee that the that the piece that you're holding in there will run absolutely true. Uh, granted, at this part of the process where I'm just grinding off uh, the remainder of the pivot, uh, absolute truth isn't absolutely vital. Um, but later on when we get to drilling the hole, which the new pivot will be inserted into, it does need to be absolutely true. And so I'm going back and forth um, between the two, uh, trying to find uh, a better and more true uh, way of holding uh, the fourth wheel pinion and the fourth wheel arbor. The next step in the process is, as I was taught, to strike the center or basically it's to cut a little dimple in uh, in the very center of the arbor this is this is the point when absolute truth is necessary and um, actually the process isn't that difficult to do um, but it is actually considerably more difficult when you're trying to perform it in front of a ca camera and you're looking at the camera screen instead of the workpiece itself so uh, show me a bit of mercy if you would um, once you get it it's um, it's clearly most clearly demonstrated by simply having that center support the tip of the graver and if the tip of the graver does not wobble around you know that you've got it uh, perfectly centered. This is the the center that we will use to start the drill and <clears throat> I'm gonna put in the title of this I think um, you know, repivoting freehand. And 
the reason why I would put that in, in the, the technique that I'm showing right now is very much freehand. I'm holding a carbide drill bit um, in a pin vise and I'm just holding it with my hand. And this is the, the way that I first learned and um, the way I thought I would demonstrate here. I do have another technique that I use for um, some repivoting jobs that I do and I do intend on eventually making another video showing that technique but uh, this one literally I'm I'm holding the drill bit in in my hand in a pin vise and it's important of course that you hold uh, the pin vise perfectly straight on the centers and uh, don't hold it to one side angled to one side or another because you'll drill a hole that is actually slightly conical shaped or tapered and not cylindrical and you want it to be as cylindrical as possible uh, just very briefly about the drill bit I made the drill bit myself out of a carbide dental burr. Um, if any of you would like to see that demonstrated the making of a drill bit, um, leave a comment in the, the comment section below. But um, so we've we've measured that the whole the inside diameter of the jewel is about 0 0.27, 0 0.275 I'm using a, a drill bit that is 0 0.30 millimeters or three tenths of a millimeters. It's important that you keep clearing the chips here, otherwise um, they will cause the, the drill bit to bind in the hole and it will break off in the hole. Ask me how I know that. So constantly cleaning the, the tip of the drill bit, cleaning the chips, and eventually you get deep enough you can proceed. At this point, I'm I'm taking a piece of piano wire that's um, thicker than what I need. That's the steel that I use piano wire for uh, making the new plugs, the new pivots, um, and it's a measure a matter of uh, stoning it down to about one hundredth of a millimeter large or yeah, one hundredth of a millimeter larger um, than the diameter of the drill that you just used to drill the hole. So anywhere from a half a hundredth to a hundredth of a millimeter um, larger than the drill bit is what you want to shoot for. And when you get close, ultimately um, it's an issue of test fitting it and you want just the very tip to fit in the hole but not it to go all the way back the the mouth of the hole by virtue of it being the mouth is going to be um, a little bit wider than the, the the body of the hole so the the very tip of the hole uh, very tip of the the new plug should fit in, but it shouldn't go very far in. And here I'm just shortening it a little bit and uh, going to test it again.
Now when I'm satisfied with the fit, the way I fit it in is it's just friction fit and I just twist it on slightly and you can um, you could then test it to see if it's snug enough and it should be a pretty tight twist and um, that is enough to hold it in place now a couple notes about the way I do it versus the way other people may do it some people use Loctite uh, when they insert the plug into the hole in the arbor and I have found that with with uh, the way that I do it just making the plug uh, a hundredth or a half a hundredth larger um, that that is sufficient I don't need Loctite um, and another thing that I do especially like this pivot right here which is a fourth wheel pivot extended pivot sometimes I will drill the hole slightly larger than the finished pivot and then uh, work the pivot down some people don't think this is good policy because um, as you're putting sideways pressure on the pivot as I am here um, the plug is likely to wobble out and what I have found is if the hole that you've drilled into the arbor is perfectly cylindrical or nearly so and the the plug that you uh, twist into that hole is perfectly cylindrical then there's very little chance of it wobbling out now when I first learned repivoting um, the plugs I was taught to make them slightly tapered those will wobble out those will come out if you try to dress them down so it's more important if you do that technique to make sure that the pivot diameter is finished and the same diameter as the hole that you drilled but um, I'm just using a sapphire file here that I've made out of a broken watch crystal I like to use that because I can see through it see where I'm grinding um, and I'm just taking a little bit off at a time and much like when I was initially um, grinding the piano wire you you take a little off you clean it you measure it and you continue on down to the finished diameter that you want and our finished diameter is going to be you know 26 uh, roughly about 0.26 but ultimately um, as you get close to it um, you discard or you put aside the uh, micrometer and you start test fitting it and ultimately you you fit the pivot to the jewel um, regardless of whatever the diameter is and so after I've got a good fit that I'm very satisfied with I, I work on finishing it um, I like the finish that uh, a Jasper stone gives uh, to a pivot and for many years this was the final finish that I used uh, on a pivot but recently I've come across someone who uses rubberized abrasive to do the last little last little polish and I found it is it is uh, superior to that of the Jasper slip alone so I'll just dress it very briefly with uh, this 0.1 micron uh, rubberized abrasive and so there we go in the piece and it spins freely as well as check the end shake and make sure that there's freedom uh, when it comes to end shake as well well that's it for this video I want to thank everybody for watching and uh, feel free to leave a comment or a question in the comments below. I do hope to have an, uh, at least one more 
repivoting video come out eventually. So please stay tuned. Uh, more is certainly to come. Thanks again for watching.